I'm gonna go over a little bit of what I have here. I'm not gonna go over in detail everything, but basically I've just got a variety of pencils, some oil pastels, I'll probably grab some Caran d'Ache Neo colors too, some regular new pastels, gelatos, some inks, I've got some stamps, some collage papers, paints, and my tea. So what I did was I already sort of got this going a little bit. This and this are gonna be the two covers. These are just made out of printing paper. So the weight of it is like mixed media paper. It has a little bit of texture on it, like watercolor paper. That doesn't really matter. It just happened to be uh, scraps of paper that I had lying around that would be firm enough for a cover. So all of this is me trying to use up stuff I have in my studio that's just sitting. So I ripped up some papers at about the right size. These are just scraps of collage paper that I had sitting in my bin. Some of them are stenciled ones that I made on my own. Some of them are book pages. What else do we have in here? More stenciled ones. Some of them are pre-printed um, like these. This one's textured. Here's some more pre-printed ones. And I'm gonna mix these all up more. This is actually canvas paper, which is my favorite thing to add to my own art journals. If you haven't done this before, um, give it a go because you can really pull up the texture with the brush and it's just really unexpected to see canvas texture in something that's like a book. So I'm gonna use this tag just to put some colors from my palette. So I'm limiting myself to very autumny colors like peaches and orangey reds and light pinks and yellow ochres. And then I'm gonna offset that with something that's more like a Prussian blue or these blue grays. Green is my absolute favorite color to use in my artwork, and I'm actually gonna try to challenge myself and not use that anywhere in this art journal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make some marks on this with a variety of supplies in my colors and probably some paints too, and that's it. <laughs> few colors on here so this is done. So now that that part's done I set that aside and I'm gonna go ahead and work on the covers. I'm probably not going to finish these today per se. I'm just gonna really get them going and you know kill the white on here and get some marks and things on them, grunge them up a little bit. On the inside all I did was take some brown tissue paper and glue it down with some gel medium and just threw some scrap craft paper and collage papers I had on these just to kind of get them going on the inside. <laughs> just another little tip. If you like using imagery in your art journals or your artwork, it's good to spend a few hours or even a day just printing out a bunch of images so that you have them ready when you need them. It just makes it so much easier to sit down. So I already went through this, so I'm gonna be using the two on the top, but I went through and made sure most of what I have in here is fall stuff, it's probably a few things I gotta pull out, but it's all stuff that I could use in this particular art journal.
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry before I do anything else to it. It's very wet, so I can't add anything anymore. And so what I'm gonna do is start putting the pages together. I'm not binding this book by making holes or putting string or any of that. I'm essentially completely gluing this book together with packing tape. So if you haven't seen this before, this is packing tape you can get at any office supply store. Um, sometimes big box stores have them too, but it is gum tape and essentially the other side isn't sticky until you wet it and it's got all these nice threads running through it so you can use it to put a book together. So what I'm going to do is start gluing this book together page by page. I'm going to show you an example for a few pages for how I go about this and we're going to fast forward after that because I think after you see me do it once or twice, you're going to know what the gist is. Finish binding these together, I'll show you what the whole inside looks like after we put the cover together and put it on. So while I had the camera off, I made some changes to the cover. All I did was mix some phthalo blue with some black to put some darks back on here because I just wanted it to be grungier and this leaves me some room to play and put some more saturated color on there at another time. And here I am doing the same thing. This is just a watered down black with a low blue and it's kind of an easy way, a shortcut to make your own Prussian blue. It's watered down but I'm just dragging the brush across the top so that the orange and the pinks will still show through. I don't really want to cover all that up. I just want it to be darker and grungier. Now we're going to bind these two pieces together. We need to leave room in the middle, right, for all of our pages. So let's put them in and kind of see. If you do this, you'll make sure you give enough room or so for your pages. It's okay if it's a little bit too big or too small. You just don't want it to be too off. So now I've got two pieces of that tape. I made it narrower, so I cut strips off the sides of each of these so they don't cover up so much of my cover. So these are two different lengths. The shorter one's gonna go on the inside and the longer one's gonna go on the outside so we can take the extra length on the top and the bottom and fold it over. And I'm just gonna use paint water to do this. If you care about your brushes a lot or you have really nice brushes, probably don't use them to do the gum tape because it technically is glue. I just am not overly concerned about it. And make sure to pick this up pretty quickly so you don't glue your pages to the thing underneath. And that reinforces the edges. So now we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take this gum tape, put it down. This part's a little bit trickier. You wanna lift this up. Stick that down, fold it over. Mush. Same thing on the back. I'm gonna stick this down and then you're gonna lift it up and stick that down. And voila, we have an art journal. So let's take a look inside. We've got all of these beautiful variety of pages and textures and patterns to work on. 
And this is just gonna make it so that it's nice for me when I wanna sit down and just make some marks or throw some paint or drip some ink on here that I can just open up to any page and do that. For me, this journal is not about doing spreads. The grungier and messier it is to start off with, the better, because it's gonna keep me remembering that this isn't for necessarily doing a bunch of intricate spreads on here. This is just a way for me when I'm busy, whether it's filming or I don't have time to work on a painting or something like that, that I can come down and just really enjoy the sensory experience of my art supplies. So now comes the super fun part, which is just going through and messing up some of the pages. Some of the stuff that I pulled out, I have light modeling paste, I have crackle paste, I have fiber paste, I have absorbent ground, and I have pastel ground. And I just wanna take some of these and mash them across the pages because the paint takes to these different items differently. And it's just another way for me to explore stuff on the page. And I have some stamps here. This is archival ink, so it's not gonna move if I wet it. I might actually put my tea in here. That could be a bad idea, um, but I like to try different things. I'm not overly concerned. It's not gonna get super destroyed. And I, again, I want it to be pretty junky anyway. some more darks to my front and I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a flip through if you have pages that are sticking together if you chose to put medium or gesso or anything to grunge up the pages things dry pretty quickly but if you go through and you know just peel them apart it'll be fine if things stick and rip sometimes it's even better because it's just grungier and messier so most of my pastes are already starting to dry put them on pretty thin that one's almost done. This is just gonna give me like a ton of variety. I don't remember what paste I put on any of these pages either. So I'm not gonna remember which one's fiber paste and what it does and so on. So there's gonna be some nice discoveries as I come through here, an art journal. And since I already have my limited palette, I've got supplies set aside. And in another video, I'm gonna go through and put some color in here and mess it up in a different way. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Put tea. You know what, I'm just gonna squeeze the tea bag out. And this is an orange spice tea, so it's got some color to it. Let me see if I can find some white there. This is gonna make it smell nice too, cause it's a very um, spiced, it's not quite cinnamon. I don't know what's in here for spices, but it's gonna make the journal itself smell like fall, which is pretty cool. 
All right, that's probably enough of the tea. I'm just gonna leave this open a bit to dry. And in another video, I'm gonna go through and add some color and some marks in here. So be 